In this video, I'm going to compare 15 of the most popular online investing brokers that allows you to invest in the Australian stock market. With so many options out there, it can be very confusing for an investor like yourself to choose the right one. I truly believe that investing does not need to be complicated and there are a lot of information out there that overcomplicates everything and intimidates new investors from beginning their investing journey. So this video will cover only the important things you need to know with no extra fluff. That is why I'll compare the brokerage fees, security and other important features you need to know when selecting the right online broker. And at the end of the video, I'll reveal my top 3 favourite online investing brokers from the list. So if you're interested, let's get started. So before we jump into the list of brokers, there are two important things you should look out for in an Australian broker. The first is the fees, and more specifically, the brokerage fee. So every time you buy or sell a stock on one of these platforms, you have to pay something called a brokerage fee. This is basically a commission fee you pay to the platform for buying or selling the shares for you. And let's face it, if you're watching this kind of video on YouTube, you're probably like me and love to save as much money as possible on fees. So we need to find a broker that offers the same service as everyone else but at a lower fee. And if you're a beginner in investing, you probably don't have that much money to begin with. So you'll probably be investing in smaller chunks. So the more times you invest, the more brokerage fees you'll be charged. And after a while, the brokerage fees may start eating into your profits. So again, you'll probably be looking for a broker that charges a lower brokerage fee. Also, please note, to keep it simple, I'll only be focusing on the ASX today. Some of these brokers offer international shares, but I won't be talking about that today. So all the fees I talk about today are only for Australian shares. The second thing I look for in an Australian broker is chess sponsorship. Now this term is a little misleading because it's got nothing to do with chess and no one is sponsoring anyone. A chess sponsored broker simply means when you buy from that broker, you own the shares directly. The broker will send a list of who owns what shares directly to the ASX. You'll be given something called a HIN, which stands for Holder Identification Number. And this number is linked to your name and details. So if worst case scenario, your broker goes out of business, you can easily claim your shares from the ASX. Now in terms of security, all the brokers on the list today has an ASIC license, so they are all fairly secure under the strict Australian laws. Chess sponsorship just adds an extra layer of security to your shares. It also allows you to transfer your shares easily to another broker, provided both brokers are chess sponsored. In addition, you are able to set up a dividend reinvestment plan, which gives you the option to automatically reinvest any dividends that you receive. Overall, it just gives you much more options with what you can do with your shares. If the broker is not chess sponsored, then usually it operates under a custodian model. This basically means you do not technically own the shares and the platform is holding the shares on your behalf. Now there is nothing inherently wrong with that, but it just means you get less flexibility on how you control your shares. Also, it's important to note that chess sponsorship is purely an Australian thing. So if you want to invest in other countries like the US, you won't have chess sponsorship. All the brokers that allow you to buy US stocks are all under a custodian model. Having said all that, I'm personally willing to pay a bit more in brokerage for a chess sponsored broker. And if you keep watching, you will see that some of the cheaper brokers on the list are surprisingly chess sponsored. So with these two things in mind, let's go through each broker on the list. Let's begin with the big four banks. Now, of course, you already know who they are. Commonwealth, NAB, Westpac and ANZ. Each of them have their own in-house online broker that allows you to invest in shares whether you are already their customer or if you use another bank. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the big four banks because of their high brokerage fees. However, a lot of beginners feel safer using a big four broker since they have a good reputation because they've been around for longer. And the fact that they are backed by a big bank so it's less likely to go out of business. And to be honest, I completely understand this because I felt the same way when I first started my investment journey. My first online broker was Comsec. I didn't trust all the other brokers that weren't backed by a big bank. And you know what? If opening an account with a big four broker gives you the confidence to start investing safely, then that can only be a good thing. I would rather you pay more in brokerage fees than spend your life not investing at all. And with that being said, let's have a look at the list. Let's start with Comsec. This is the broker most people will look to when they first start investing. That is because it is the largest online brokerage platform in Australia, which is owned by the largest bank in Australia in Commonwealth Bank. I started with Comsec many years ago when I first started investing. And although I don't use it anymore because of the high fees, I still hold some of my shares on the platform. If you do want to use Comsec, then I would suggest you open a CDIA account, which is basically a bank account designed to fund your Comsec account. So you will deposit money into this account to buy shares and you will receive your settlement in this account whenever you sell your shares. Comsec will also charge you a cheaper brokerage fee if you have a CDIA. So if you look on the spreadsheet, Comsec charges $10 per trade up to $1,000. Then they'll charge you $19.95 per trade for over $1,000 and up to 10K. Then $29.95 per trade for over 10K and up to 25K. And a flat rate of 0.12% for all trades over 25K. And you'll notice that the fees are significantly higher if you do not have a CDIA account. There is no inactivity fee, which means they won't charge you if you haven't invested in your account for over 12 months. Most of the brokers on the list today don't have an inactivity fee, but there are a few that do, so please be aware. Also, like all the other big four brokers, Comsec is chess sponsored. And although I did mention that I'm not a big fan of the big four brokers, I would say if you had to pick one, then Comsec would be a good choice. That is because I think Comsec has the best built-in researching tool on their platform compared to any other broker. You can look up a stock and be presented with a lot of data and charts, which I think is perfect for beginners learning to research stocks. And even though I don't use Comsec for buying shares anymore, I still use their platform to research stocks that I'm interested in because it is that good. I have done a 
full Comsec review video, so I'll leave a link down in the description if you're interested. Let's now move on to NAB Trade, which is the online broker owned by NAB. The brokerage fees are $9.95 for up to $1,000, $14.95 for up to 5K, $19.95 for up to 20K, and 0.11% for over 20K. So overall, the brokerage fees are slightly cheaper than Comsec, so if you're already a NAB customer and you only want a big four broker, then it's not the worst choice in the world to use NAB Trade. However, in my opinion, their platform is not as good as Comsec's when it comes to research. They also have no inactivity fee and are chess sponsored. The next broker on our list is Westpac. Similar to Comsec, Westpac offers cheaper brokerage if you open a Westpac cash investment account. With this account, they charge $90.95 per trade or 0.11%, whichever is higher. Without a Westpac cash investment account, they charge $29.95 95 per trade or 0.29% whichever is higher. So the fees are somewhat comparable to Comsec and NAB. They also have no inactivity fee and are chess sponsored. Moving on to the last broker on this list, we have ANZ. And previously, they had their own in-house broker which charged similar fees to the other big four banks. However, ANZ has recently announced that they have closed their platform because they have come to an agreement to be partners with CMC Market which is another popular online broker. So every ANZ brokerage account has now been automatically transitioned to CMC Markets from the 15th of March 2023. So that concludes this part of the video for the big four banks. While I personally won't be using them, I do understand the appeal they have for some investors who want extra security. And if this gives them the extra confidence to start investing, then hey, I'm all for it. Let's now move on to the next list which is all the brokers that offers chess sponsorship. The first on our list is CMC Markets, which we previously mentioned with ANZ. CMC Markets has recently announced zero brokerage fees to buy Australian shares up to $1,000 a day. Now, I'll be honest, I don't currently use CMC, but that feature right there is really tempting me to switch to their platform. On this channel, I'm a big advocate of dollar cost averaging, which means investing in smaller amounts in regular intervals, no matter the share price. And if you wanna follow this strategy, then CMC Markets is the perfect broker to do this. It means you can make regular small investments without having to worry about brokerage fees eating into your profits. And if you wanna invest in more than $1,000 or sell your shares, then it will be $11 per trade or 0.1%, whichever is higher. So for lump sum investing, it's not the cheapest. But for dollar cost averaging, I don't see any other brokers on the list that is better in terms of fees. However, please note that there is a $15 per month inactivity fee if you don't invest in your account for more than 12 months. But if you are dollar cost averaging every month or so, then this shouldn't be an issue. However, if you plan to just leave your portfolio to grow without further contributions, then you may consider transferring your shares to another broker that does not charge an inactivity fee. CMC Markets is also chess sponsored. So overall, I think it's a wonderful option if you wanna follow a dollar cost average strategy. The next broker on the list is Stake. This is the broker that I currently use. At first, Stake made his name in Australia as the cheapest broker to buy US shares, but a couple of years ago, they announced that they will be offering Australian shares. This made me really excited because I was already using Stake to invest in US stocks, and I really enjoyed using their app. Stake currently charges $3 per trade for up to 30K and 0.01% for trades over 30K. In my opinion, this is very cheap compared to the rest of the brokers on the list. And pound for pound, you can make the argument that it's the cheapest overall broker in Australia. And as a bonus, Stake currently has a promotion that offers you a couple of ways to get up to 10 free trades per month. So the first way is you can refer a friend to stake and if they sign up using a referral link you can save one dollar brokerage fee for the next 12 months this means that if you can successfully refer three friends then you'll have free brokerage for the next 12 months and if you can get six friends to sign up then you'll get 24 months free brokerage and so on however please note that you'll be limited to 10 free trades per month i would imagine that is more than enough for most people the second way to get zero brokerage fees for a year is to transfer over your shares from another broker to stake i have previously done this by transferring my shares from self wealth to stake and it was quite an easy process just follow the prompts on the stake app and on top of all that Stake does not charge any inactivity fee and it is chess sponsored. And if you can keep the fees this low, then in my opinion, Stake is one of the best overall brokers currently available in Australia. The next broker on the list is Self Wealth, and this broker will always have a place in my heart because it's the first broker I used outside of Comsec. It was founded in 2012, so it is a bit more established than a lot of the brokers on this list. Before the pandemic popularized investing, Self Wealth was one of the most popular investing platforms due to its flat $9.50 brokerage fee for any amount invested. At the time, it was considered very cheap. But ever since the pandemic, all the investing platforms have been trying to undercut each other and has essentially been a race to zero brokerage fees. I think this will continue into the future, so if Self Wealth wants to compete, they will need to consider reducing their fees or offering some type of special feature that makes them stand out. However, if it wasn't for their high brokerage fees, I would have no problems continuing to use Self Wealth because their platform is quite easy to use and I've had no problems using them in the past. And if you are a lump sum investor, meaning you invest less often but in larger amounts, then paying $9.50 per trade is such an immaterial amount in the grand scheme of things. They do not charge an inactivity fee and they are chess sponsored. The next broker on the list is Perla. 
They were founded in 2018, so still a relatively new platform. However, they have gained popularity in the last few years for their competitive fees and clean user interface. They currently charge a flat fee of $6.50 per trade for any amount, which makes it one of the cheaper options on the list. And you can even get a cheaper fee if you prepay $55 for an additional $10 credit. This means that the brokerage fee is reduced by 15% from $6.50 to $5.50. One of the key features of Perla is the auto invest function. This allows you to set up a direct debit from your bank account to be deposited to your Perla account every week, fortnight or month. And from there, Perla will automatically invest into whatever stock or ETFs you want. If you're following a dollar cost average strategy, this is a nice set and forget feature to have. Once you set it up once, you don't have to worry about it again. Perlo will continue to automatically invest for you into the future. I think this could definitely be a very useful feature for most investors because investing is very psychological and by doing this, you're making investing less emotional on yourself. It's always hard to invest when you see the market is red, but if you automate it, you can continue to live your life while investing through rain, hail or shine. And they do not charge an inactivity fee and they are chess sponsored. The next broker on the list is Saxo Markets, which is an investing platform from Saxo Bank, which is a Danish investment bank that specializes in online trading and investments. The unique thing about this broker is you can choose whether to buy your shares with chess sponsorship or without chess sponsorship. They charge $8 per trade or 0.08%, whichever is higher, for trades without chess sponsorship. This will mean your shares will be held in a custodial account. And if you do want chess sponsored shares, they charge $14 per trade or 0.1%, whichever is higher. They do not charge an inactivity fee. And just from a quick glance, it is not the most attractive broker and there are cheaper, better brokers out there. But it is another option, so I've included it on the list. The next broker is Think Market. This is a lesser known broker that offers chess sponsored shares. I'm not sure why this broker isn't that popular in the finance community, because I hardly ever hear it get mentioned. Perhaps it's because there's less marketing, social media presence and promotions, unlike the other new brokers on the list. They charge an $8 flat brokerage fee for up to 200K, and they charge 0.05% for anything above 200K and there is no inactivity fee. So overall, it's not the cheapest, but it's also not the most expensive. So it is another decent option on the list. Let's now move on to the list of brokers that do not offer chess sponsorship. Now I've made my feelings known about chess sponsorship, but let's not discount them just yet, and let's take a look at what they offer. The first broker on this list is Superhero, and this platform was heavily advertised during the pandemic. It was founded in 2018, around the same time as Perla. The cool thing about Superhero is they charge $0 brokerage if you buy Australian ETFs. So this is a decent option for investors who like to dollar cost average into index funds or ETFs. For other ASX shares, they charge a flat $5 brokerage. And from their website, you can tell they are trying to appeal to beginners by making everything simple and easy to use. And there is no inactivity fees. So out of all the non-chess sponsored brokers, they are probably one of the best. The next broker on the list is IG Trade. They charge $5 per trade if you make three or more trades per month. If you make less than three trades per month, then they charge $8 per trade or 0.1%, whichever is higher. From visiting their website, I believe it was designed for more advanced traders, especially day traders, from the way they've structured their fees. Before all the other new brokers came out, this was one of the cheapest brokers out there for short-term trading. They used to charge a $50 inactivity fee per quarter, but they have recently removed it completely, so there is no current inactivity fee. IG is also not chess sponsored. So overall, I don't think they are suitable for long-term investors as their product is more catered towards day trading and CDFs which allow you to speculate on short-term movements of an asset. So again, not really the ideal broker for new investors. The next broker on the list is Vanguard Australian Personal Investor. So you probably already heard of Vanguard, who are one of the biggest investment companies in the world that offers ETFs and mutual funds to many countries. They are particularly popular in Australia, and in 2020, they launched their own online brokerage platform called Vanguard Australian Personal Investor. They offer $0 brokerage fee to buy Vanguard ETFs, but they do charge $9 to sell. They also charge a $9 flat fee to buy and sell other ASX shares. In addition, they charge a 0.1% account fee per year to hold ASX direct shares. This means that if you have any shares on the platform that is not a Vanguard product, you will be charged 0.1% per year to hold them. As a self-confessed Vanguard fan, it pains me to say, but that is a bit ridiculous. And I think Vanguard has not been competitive at all with all these kind of sneaky fees. However, they do offer an auto invest feature where you can set up your bank to transfer a certain amount to your Vanguard account and that will automatically be invested for you. So if you only plan to invest in Vanguard ETFs, then it could make sense for you with a $0 brokerage fee. But with no chess sponsorship, you're kind of just stuck in the Vanguard ecosystem and you won't be able to transfer any shares out. Overall, while I do like Vanguard taking initiative in creating their own investing platform, I think there is still a long way to go before I would call them competitive and a legit option to investors in Australia. The next broker on the list is eToro and this is a platform that offers many things besides shares such as crypto, CFDs and debit cards. So basically, they are trying to be an all-in-one finance platform. They offer $0 brokerage fees on Australian stocks and while that might seem amazing on paper, here is a few things to note. 
They are limited in what ASX companies you can invest in. Not every company will be available to invest. This for me is already a deal breaker because I don't want to be limited to what I can and cannot invest. On top of that, your account will always be in USD, so you'll have to pay a foreign exchange fee each time you want to convert your money into Aussie dollars. There is also an inactivity fee of $10 per month if your account is inactive for more than 12 months. And as we know already, it's not chair sponsored. Overall, while I do think eToro is a great company, I feel it's kind of like a jack of all trades, master of none type of platform. If you're serious about shares only, then I think there are plenty of other better options on the list. The next broker on the list is Moomoo, which is a brokerage platform based in California and is very popular in the US, Hong Kong and Singapore. In 2022, they decided to launch in Australia, offering Australian, US and Hong Kong stocks to Australian investors. They currently have a promotion where they are offering $0 brokerage for 180 days for new investors. Their normal brokerage fee is $8.80 or 0.088%, whichever is higher. They boast many powerful investing tools and features on their website, so I believe they are designed for more advanced users. If you're a beginner, you may find their features a bit intimidating. They don't have any inactivity fees and they are not chess sponsored. I think their platform could be useful if you're interested in Hong Kong or US stocks, but as an Australian broker, I don't think their fees are competitive enough. The next broker on the list is Tiger Brokers. This is a similar broker to Moomoo in that they offer Australian, US and Hong Kong stocks to Australian investors. They also have a promotion where they are offering $0 brokerage for new investors for the first three months. After that, they charge a 0.025% of the trade value with a minimum of $6.49 per order. So it's a little bit more competitive than Moomoo, but I'm not sure if it's good enough to compete with some of the other brokers on the list. And their website is a bit more simpler than Moomoo, and there's actually a Learn tab on there, which has a few useful articles about investing. I've read a few of them, and they are actually pretty good. If anything, you could go on their website to read some decent educational content. But as an Australian broker itself, I think they need to offer a lot more. And that rounds out our top 15 online brokers in Australia. So before I reveal my top three brokers, I just wanted to note a few things if you're a new investor. Please know that fees change often. These brokers sometimes play games to get customers to sign up with the promise of a cheap fee, then they may increase their price without warning. So the top three I revealed today may not be the top three in a year's time. So just keep that in mind and try not to be too loyal to a particular platform. It's okay to look elsewhere if you feel you're not getting a good deal. Also, it's okay to have more than one broker. Personally, I have a few brokers because I usually use the one with the cheapest fees at the time and it gives me the option to go back to a broker if they reduce their fees. And on the other side of the coin, if you prefer to have just one broker since you don't want to keep track of multiple brokers, then that's fine too. Do whatever makes it easier for you to invest. All right, so here are the top three brokers in my opinion. In third place, I'll give it to Perla. Cheap $6.50 flat fee, tick. No inactivity fees, tick. Chess sponsored, tick. So overall, Perla has the third lowest fees on the list with chess sponsorship, so it's no surprise that it comes in at number three. I also love their social media team on Instagram who encourages retail investors like you and I to continue investing. In a way, I feel like Perla are the people's broker. And for second place, this was extremely hard because I think number one and two can easily be swapped. Both are fully deserving to be top one on the list and I did consider placing them joint first, but I decided not to be a cop-out and pick the winner. So my number two is... CMC Markets. And again, this honestly could have been number one. CMC Markets is the perfect broker for investors who want a dollar cost average. Their $0 brokerage for buys up to $1,000 per day is honestly such a great deal. So if you want to invest in a few ETFs which covers different markets, then it's perfect. But please note, you do still have to pay $11 or 0.1% to sell in the future. And of course, they are chess sponsored, which by now you may have realized is a prerequisite for me. But their one tiny blemish is that they have a $15 per month inactivity fee if you leave your account inactive for over a year. Now, this probably won't be an issue if you're dollar cost averaging regularly, but I just don't like the idea of any sneaky fees that can be applied in the future. And perhaps that's what's cost them the number one spot for me. And speaking of number one, I think you may have already figured out who it is, but let's make it official. I'm crowning Stake as my number one broker in Australia. I believe Stake is the best overall broker to invest in Australian shares. They charge a $3 brokerage, which is currently the cheapest. If you don't don't include special deals with caveats like CMC's $1,000 deal or Superhero $0 brokerage for ETFs. $3 brokerage is the cheapest pound for pound fee on the list up to 30k. And let's be honest, most people aren't investing more than 30k at a time. Also, the current promotion to get free brokerage with stake is very doable by either transferring your existing shares to stake or referring three friends to use stake. And of course, there is no inactivity fees and they are chess sponsored. Stake is the broker that I'm currently using, although I have recently opened up a CMC Markets account and may try that in the future. And the last reason I like Stake so much is the user interface is very sleek and simple to use. It gives off a very modern vibe and I just enjoy using it. So for those reasons, Stake is my deserved number one Australian broker for this video. By the way, if you're one of the legends who made it this far into the video, the secret word today is gold, so comment that down below so I know who you are. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel because I'll be making a lot more personal finance videos like this in the future and you don't want to miss them. So that was my comparison of the top 15 online brokers in Australia. And if you want to learn more about how to invest in the Australian stock market, check out this video on screen where I break down how the ASX works and how you can begin your investing journey today. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video.